Hey, y'all. So, let's talk about this Intercontinental Championship one uh, real quick. So, Sami Zayn has been stripped of the Intercontinental Championship as of May the 14th or something like that, uh, which I think was a Thursday. So, uh, there was a lot of people complaining, upset that Sami Zayn was stripped of the Intercontinental Championship. They naturally assumed that he just didn't want to perform during a pandemic. But, Sami Zayn had already performed during a pandemic, so there's no way to really know for sure if that was the case and WWE is not going to come out and say it whatever but uh there are a couple of things one there's no Canadians in WWE right now Edge lives in uh North Carolina by the way so um but it's Kevin Owens uh Brock Lesnar who is also who lives in Canada I should say um Robert Roode who's Canadian None of those guys are in the WWE. None of them are performing right now because I think they're probably is having some visa issues. There's probably some travel problems going on right now because of the pandemic. But uh, ultimately, that could be it because I know the same thing is also Canadian. So that could be it. But if it was travel restrictions, WWE would have just said travel restrictions. But that's not what they said. They just said he's unable to perform or unable to compete. Whatever. Um it could it be an injury? They would have just said if it was an injury. So I think it pretty much just says that he just doesn't want to be there. Whatever. But ultimately, this is for the best. So Sami Zayn is stripped of the Intercontinental Championship, so they decided to do a tournament. Um, I'm disappointed that it's only eight people. Um, I think that when you had the, that the Cruiserweight Tournament was uh, is was a bigger um, bracket for starters. They it was it seems like it's more important. Yes, it's just the cruiserweight title, but it just feels like it's more important when you have an actual round robin tournament with uh, more performers and more matches, and it's going to go on for a longer amount of time. Like this is shorter, but it has bigger names in it. But uh, I just I'm disappointed they put so much effort into the cruiserweight title, and they don't put as much effort into the Intercontinental Championship. Like that's really disappointing. But let's go through this bracket and go through this tournament real quick. So Daniel Bryan versus Drew Gulak, um, excellent match. Um, I love these guys working together. Gulak, I, I would love to see him. I wish Gulak had, t- had taken Elias' spot and it was G- Gulak versus Corbin. Um, I think that would have been better. But you got to put Daniel Bryan over. You got, I mean, he's the world champion. He's a guy who could carry the, the title into the future. You you gotta you gotta put Daniel Bryan over in that situation. But I, I, again, I love Drew Gulak. I, I just don't know how you get him to the next level. I'm just not sure. Maybe turning on Daniel Bryan in the future will do it. But you know, as long as they keep, as long as they keep him, you know, it's just hard for me to to, to figure out how they make it work. Then you had Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. Uh, Jeff Hardy is the Rey Mysterio of the SmackDown brand. And what I mean by that is. He's the colorful underdog babyface, who, you know, is up there in age, but people are still are holding on to him because he was so popular in the 90s and the 2000s. And they will always have faith in him. They will never give up on him. There will always be people who are fans of Rey Mysterio and Jeff Hardy. And you're talking, you're what, not talking to, but you're listening to one. I'm a huge fan of both guys. Um, but furthermore, the real reason why I say that is because um, J- last year, Ray was really built up as a legit, you know, uh, one more run kind of guy where, you know, we went from Ray just getting abused by Bobby Lashley to Ray credibly wrestling Brock Lesnar and then winning the U S title. And that, that momentum that he was able to build was fantastic, you know, and Ray has been kind of on a run since, but, and I think that that's really what they're trying to replicate on SmackDown with Jeff Hardy. When they're doing all of the one more run, you know, I'm not going to mess it up this time. Y'all going to y'all, y'all gonna be, get behind me. And I think that this is where you start putting the title on Jeff Hardy. And I think Jeff Hardy's going to win the title. Now, Sheamus came in with a lot of momentum. Uh, there was a lot of people who were kind of expecting more of Sheamus. And there, look, there's nothing wrong with Sheamus. I kind of like him. He's he's big. He's physical. But I think that he's just in the way right now. You know, he's just you know, when when the crowds disappeared and WrestleMania and everything turned to shit. He's just one of those guys that got lost in the shuffle. 
Like he had momentum when he was, when he came back. And then out of nowhere, it just died. You know, it just, it just fucking died. You know, I know because, you know, everything in the world kind of fell flat. But, you know, Seamus, people caring about Seamus kind of died, man. And now people are just kind of like, well, he's just out there every week intimidating Michael Cole. He doesn't have a mission anymore. And I think that winning the Intercontinental Championship, which was one of his goals. He talked about it on Twitter back when Braun Strowman was the Intercontinental Champion. So... You know, there is some opportunity there to have Sheamus uh, kind of, if you promised him the Intercontinental Championship earlier this year, I know that when the pandemic, well, not even when the pandemic happened, there was uh, this whole ordeal when they took the title off of Braun Strowman and put it on Sami Zayn, but it looked like it was going to be Strowman and Sheamus at WrestleMania, then they went a complete 180 on that. But, uh, so Sheamus is lost in the shuffle. And I think you put the title on Jeff. And I think the winner of this match is going to win the title. Um, and Jeff Hardy's been in a kind of chapter before. Sheamus has not. So I think that's a really interesting storyline to go with is that um, Sheamus and AJ Styles are the two guys in the tournament who have won every belt except the Intercontinental title. So you just have these guys, you know, fighting for it kind of adds prestige because you're saying like these guys are former world champions, but they want to have all the titles. They want to be, they want to elevate everything. And Daniel Bryan is the same way. Like I want to elevate everything, but I think that you not only have Jeff Hardy win this match, but you have Jeff Hardy win the tournament. So you had Elias and Baron Corbin. Again, I've said, that I don't really, I think Elias is best as a, one of those performers that interacts with the crowd. I don't think you need extensive Elias matches. Like, this idea of Elias wrestling for three commercial breaks or something like that is absolutely asinine to me. Why they managed to do that and why they have him do it with Baron fucking Corbin, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> if you're going to have Elias wrestle a long match, it should be with somebody who could carry him to a good match. And look, I'm not saying that Corbin sucks. You know, he's passable. He's not the best, He, but, you know, he's better than Elias. But that's not saying much. But ultimately, I, don't, I really don't think either one of these guys had a shot. Corbin is a guy who could probably win the Intercontinental title and make and make make it worth something. But he's already lost because as I record this, I'm actually watching SmackDown and he just got pinned. So, <laughs> so, so uh, sucks. You know, that, that sucks. Um, but the big match and the match that I'm looking forward to the most, obviously, is the Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles match. And this match is going to take place on the May 23rd episode of SmackDown. And this is going to be a fucking banger. Now, I don't expect them to have a match that is anywhere near their match at Russell Kingdom. And I think just since that match has happened, everybody's kind of waiting for that, that magic in the bottle again. And it's kind of the same thing with Bailey and Sasha Banks, where everybody's just kind of waiting, 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 thinking that, you're going to catch lightning in a bottle twice. It's like, no, you can't have the same match twice. You can have a great match and you can have a great match that is different. You know, Shine and Undertaker had two, four great matches. They had the Hell in a Cell match. They had the Ground Zero match. They had the two WrestleMania matches. All those matches are awesome. Same two guys, four very different matches. Uh, notice I didn't say that their casket match was great. I thought it was okay, but I didn't. I thought that they definitely had better matches than that. But um, you can have different matches and they still be of quality and not the same. And I think their WrestleMania match was good. I think that their last man standing match was good. But I think that every every match that they have is going to be compared to their Wrestle Kingdom match. And they're never going to be able to do that again. That was lightning, again, lightning in the bottle. Both guys were leaving, so that added some emotional to the story. Um, but you're never going to get that again. That, that's gone. But that doesn't mean it just can't be good. Now, the interesting thing about this is that both guys are heels. So maybe you're going to do a situation where Shinsuke is going to turn babyface because AJ Styles is not turning uh, babyface. He's still kind of got a thing going on with Undertaker. So, you know, we're going to maybe they're going to go back to that Undertaker, AJ Styles thing. But I think you do Styles and uh, and, and Jeff Hardy in the, in the finals. Now, um, this tournament is going to produce good matches. You know, Brian and Gulak was already a good match. Um, I think Brian versus Jeff Hardy should be a fucking banger as well. And, of course, Styles and Nakamura should bang. But I'm not so sure about this Elias thing. I'm not sure if either one of... I'm not sure if either Elias, <laughs> Nakamura or Styles could carry Elias to a passable match. But 
Um, I think you do Styles versus Hardy in the main event. It's a match that has not happened since they wrestled in TNA. Um, I don't know when their last match was, but I do know that Jeff Hardy's first match in TNA in 2004 was against AJ Styles. And it was it was pretty good. It wasn't the best match that they would go on to have. And it, of course, ended in a schmoz because they didn't want to beat Jeff right off the bat and they didn't want to job um, AJ out right off the bat. But they, they did the match, and the match was pretty good. I just watched it the other day. Um, before I even knew about this tournament, I just watched it kind of randomly. And it was pretty good, you know? And I think that's your final. I think your final is going to be Jeff Hardy versus... Um, it, <laughs> Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles. Now, could it be Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan in the final? That would be fucking fantastic. But I don't, I don't see it. I think Daniel Bryan is kind of a guy who's elevating other people. And I think that, you know, Jeff Hardy is in the situation right now. Like, Daniel Bryan is a guy where you can just turn the, you can flip a light switch and he's in the main event again. But he's also pretty good at coasting as an upper mid-card guy. Um, but Braun Strowman certainly is going to need some help as a, as a top baby face. You know, he needs somebody somebody else there. And either Bryan or Styles can, not, not Bryan or Styles, but Bryan or Hardy can help him as far as, uh, carrying the top babyface role. I don't think, um, not saying that, you know, Braun is doing a bad job, even though he looked like a fucking fool. <laughs> uh, I saw clips of him trying to do the worm. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, this is, this is tragic. It's a tragedy. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay, I hate when they do that stuff. Like, that's like when Kane did the, uh, the, the trumpet, the Santino trumpet shit. Like, that shit really, I wanted to throw my fucking TV when I saw that. And um, that's kind of how I felt when I saw Braun Strowman trying to do the, the worm. I'm like, man, we can just throw the whole TV away. Cable, everything, just throw it all away. But um, I think that that's what you do. I think you, I think you do the smart play. The smart play, the safe match is Styles um, versus Hardy. You put that on the same card as Orton versus Edge, and I think you got a pretty fucking solid-ass backlash. I think you got to show that people will sit down and watch because they'd be interested in watching, you know, just those four guys really have pretty good matches. And those both of those matches should be pretty good. Um, could it be um, Hardy versus Nakamura? Sure. That could also be pretty good, too. Um, like I said, they didn't have a match. They didn't have a real match. They had a match where, you know, Nakamura hit Jeff Hardy in the balls and then hit him with a Kinshasa and pinned him for the U.S. title. And, um... So they never really got a full match out of those two guys. I think Jeff might have been hurt during that time. But, you know, it could be Nakamura versus Styles. It could be Nakamura versus Bryan. It could be AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan. Now, I would love that. I think that would be big money again. Because, you know, those two guys, man, they can't go wrong. But I definitely think you go with Styles versus Hardy as a match that the WWE has not seen before. And you do shit on it a little bit because it's happening in front of no audience. But there's going to be people who will be interested in watching it, and I'm one of them. So I think that the Intercontinental Championship, um, all in all, is the tournament is going to be okay. I don't really care why Sami Zayn was stripped. Um, it kind of sucks that he was stripped. Yes, it does suck that people like Cesaro wasn't in the tournament. Um, and the tournament wasn't 32 people or 16 or something like that. But I'm, I, I love tournaments, and I'm happy with the tournament we got. Maybe they'll um, they'll go through with another King of the Ring tournament later this year, if the, even if the crowd is empty. And who knows? You know, I like tournaments, so let's just keep doing more of them. But what do you guys think of the Intercontinental Championship and um, about Sami Zayn getting stripped? Did you like the idea? Why do you think Sami Zayn got stripped? Do you think he just doesn't want to perform? Do you think it's tribal issues? What do you think? Um, let me know in the comments section. Uh, Nick Nat, Patty White, give a dog a bone.